For the first time in its long history, the Ryder Cup is going to Italy, and the U.S. selections for Rome have caused a wild stir. Traditionally, six players have qualified by earning the most Ryder Cup points, and at the controversial end of the selection business, Captain Zach Johnson has anointed six other players to join the automatic qualifiers. There's so much drama, heartbreak, and shock around Team USA, and we'll unravel them for you in this video. The Live Absence Try not to act surprised when you don't see Live players on the Ryder Cup rosters. According to their former employers, the PGA and European Tours, those players ate the forbidden fruit when they switched allegiance to Live. And when they did, their tour memberships were not the only things they threw away. They also lost the privilege to play in the Ryder Cup. Although they were still members of the PGA of America, which made them eligible to play in the Ryder Cup, without playing on the PGA and European tours, they couldn't earn Ryder Cup points. In short, automatic qualification was a long shot for them. Beyond that, even as the proposed merger between the three parties had ended their legal hostilities, there is still reserved animosity among the players. And energy-wise, this might harm the team's performance if some players can't embrace their teammates. Perhaps, after they've ironed out the details of the merger and put a new structure in place, the likes of Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau could renew their Ryder Cup ambitions. But for now, all live players have to sit this one out and watch from the gallery. Except one guy. The Kepka Compromise While other live players are locked out, Brooks Kepka will golf for Team USA when the Ryder Cup begins. When going to war, you want to go with your best soldiers, and this must have informed General Zach Johnson's decision to field Kepka in Rome. For him, Kepka's incredible talent nullifies his rogue status. The USA already has world number one Scotty Scheffler, US Open winner Wyndham Clark, and Open champion Brian Harmon on their super talented team. But Johnson still couldn't overlook Kepka. Dropping Kepka after he won the 2023 PGA Championship would have raised many eyebrows just as picking him did. This selection, which was a no-brainer considering Kepka's abilities, must have been a source of headache for the captain. It's a dicey one because Johnson risks losing one of his best players or bearing the criticism of live detractors if his gamble fails. But since he's made his choice, Kepka now has to repay the captain's faith in him by proving his worth on the US team. Leaving Lucas Glover behind Captain Johnson broke many hearts with his picks, but Lucas Glover's might be the worst hit of the bunch. If Johnson had picked 43-year-old Glover, he would have been the oldest player on the team, but his age would have had nothing to do with it. Glover merits a place on the team based on sheer statistics. In fact, he would have been the most informed U.S. player going into the tournament. 2023 is the year Glover had dreamed of since 2009 when he won the U.S. Open at Bethpage Black. That major win and a string of impressive performances had shot him to 15th in the world rankings. But he would lose his momentum to a crippling case of yips, causing him to fall to a career-low 634th in the rankings. He fooled everyone at the start of 2023, missing five cuts in six starts as an odd way to announce a comeback. But in the six tournaments before the BMW Championship, Glover recorded six top six finishes. Among them were his back-to-back -back victories at the Wyndham Championship and FedEx St. Jude Championship. And after putting up performances like that, especially so close to the team announcement, no one could blame Glover for hoping. In the weeks before Johnson announced his picks, Glover told the press about his Ryder Cup aspiration. Ever since I've turned pro, it was one of my goals and I've never achieved it. This is the closest I've been to being in the mix for a pick or even making it outright for about 10 to 12 years. However, his hunger and numbers were not enough to convince the U.S. captain. Cameron Young is not too young for the Ryder Cup, but... Okay, maybe Johnson left out Glover because he found his form late, finishing 16th in the Ryder Cup points, and this would have been his first rodeo. But what about Cameron Young? Like the veteran Glover, PGA Tour's 2022 Rookie of the Year was looking forward to his first Ryder Cup, and frankly, he'd done enough to make it to Marco Simone Golf and Country Club. 
finishing second at the WGC match play and in the top 10 at both the Masters and Open proved Young was still the future of golf. To top it off, he finished ninth on the Ryder Cup points list. So how could he not be going to Rome? Fred Couples made matters worse when he confirmed Young's place on the team in July 2023. He told his co-host on the Fred Couples show on Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio, Cam Young will be in Italy. And since Couples was one of Johnson's vice captains, one would expect him to have some inside knowledge. However, Young never got the call Couples promised him. Instead, he got Johnson's call to tell him he didn't make his team. According to Johnson, calling Young was the hardest. He told the media at the team announcement, It did keep me up at night having to make those phone calls, specifically Cam. Phenomenal player, better person, he was nothing but class. And about Couples' false prophecy, Johnson said, Yeah, I know what was said, but I think that was a while back. It was kind of in jest. It is what it is. Justifying the choice of Justin Thomas The captain's picks are the captain's business, and all U.S. fans can do is support Johnson and his team. Still, no fan would gloss over the fact that the selection of Justin Thomas is highly questionable. Yes, he's a two-time major winner and a 15-time PGA Tour champion. And honestly, some months ago, Thomas would have been an easy favorite. But things have changed in the months before the Ryder Cup. He'd missed the cut in all but one of the four major tournaments. He only finished tied for 65 at the PGA Championship, where he was the defending champion. This, plus notching only three top tens in 20 starts and missing the FedEx Cup playoffs by a place, makes JT look like USA's weak link. His 15th place finish on the Ryder Cup points makes him the lowest placed player on the team. But Johnson has sound reasons for picking Thomas. In his words, He has, without question, been the heart and soul of Team USA. He is our emotional leader. He leads by example. He has a fantastic overall Ryder Cup record, and his passion for the Ryder Cup is evident. He was born for this, and you just don't leave JT out. You'd understand Johnson's point if you also looked at JT's remarkable record for the USA at match play events. He has six wins, two losses, and one draw in two Ryder Cups. Likewise, in three President's Cups, he has helped Team USA win in all his appearances with 10 wins, three losses, and two draws. The US has not won on European soil in 30 years, and they need their best group to break the resilient Europeans. Johnson is trusting JT based on his experience to help Team USA bring it home again, and we just have to wait and see if he made the right call. What happened to Keegan Bradley? Another player Johnson left out in the cold in favor of JT was Keegan Bradley. After Johnson's announcement, Bradley told Golf Channel's Todd Lewis that he could tell by Johnson's response over the phone that he wasn't on the team, and he was super bummed out about it. He'd set his sights on the Ryder Cup since his last campaign in 2014 and spoken about it throughout the year. Before the BMW Championship, for instance, he told the press, I think about the Ryder Cup every second I'm awake, basically. And with his wins at 2022 Zozo Championship and 2023's Travelers Championship, he must have thought he'd earned himself a call-up. You can imagine how heartbroken he must have felt when he got the call from Johnson. And because Johnson mentioned the friendship among the players as a factor in his decision-making, Bradley told the Golf Channel, I've always been an outsider in the sport, but I have tried to get close to the guys I thought would be on the team. I feel like moving forward I'm going to have to automatically qualify for the Ryder Cup. I'm pulling for the US team. You've got a feel for Bradley, who placed 11th in the Ryder Cup points, especially after he shared a post on Instagram that showed he has a score to settle in the Ryder Cup. In the post, Bradley had a picture of his Ryder Cup suitcase from his unsuccessful 2012 outing and said he'd promised he wouldn't open it until he won a Ryder Cup. Too bad he'd have to continue waiting to open that bag. The Ryder Cup is a sentimental competition, and you can feel the pain of everyone not going to Rome. Luke Donald, who replaced Henrik Stenson as Europe's captain after Stenson joined Liv, has also revealed his 12-man squad. Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Victor Hovland, Tyrrell Haddon, Robert McIntyre, and Matt Fitzpatrick will team up with their captain picks Tommy Fleetwood, Sepp Straka, Justin Rose, Shane Lowry, Nikolai Hoygar, and Ludwig Eberg. It's a formidable team, but can they beat Johnson's army of Scotty Scheffler, Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon, Patrick Cantlay, Max Homa, Xander Shoffley, Sam Burns, Ricky Fowler, Brooks Kepka, Colin Marikawa, Jordan Spieth, and Justin Thomas? You surely don't want to blink while the Ryder Cup is on.
If you enjoyed this video about the Ryder Cup, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another golf story you'd like us to cover. See you there!